It's a tough one, isn't it, to think of? <laughs> Considering we're still playing it, so it can't be terrible, and it can't be below average, I would think. I think... Uh, again, I don't know... ...on how you... It's what so you're hard. going on. Yeah, well, that's the thing, is I guess it's just based on our player experience, I guess, rather than anything technical. Like, for example, the game fucking sucks for me in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, you've got, obviously, we've got the 250 MS, like, input lag, which has resulted in me being like, the best strategy is not spending money and giving people who can actually kill stuff weapons. So, yeah, so but, but then it's, it it's, it's a very particular, way. it's a very particular criteria involving your particular experience and your circumstances as well. Yes. But it's not really reviewing the game as much as no. it is reviewing your experience of the game. Correct. It's just about, like, what do we think of it in general? Like, is it great? Is it good? Is it okay? Is it below average or bad? Like, would you want to play it again? Etc. Etc. Like, for me, it's okay. It, it's I like I won't go out of my way to play CS:GO unless I've got friends. If that makes sense. Probably put it in good, personally. You'd put it in good, based on Mike's. Okay, we'll go with yeah. that for now, and then we will see. See where we end up with. Oh, it's your tier list, Ron. No, don't. Huh? Okay, fine. We'll, your... put, we'll put it in okay. That's the benchmark then. Is it better than CSGO or not? Let's put it like that. That's what okay is. CSGO is okay. We play it with friends and it makes us happy or it makes us angry. So it's a real 50 50. <laughs> okay, so next one on the block then is Deep Rock Galactic, which we did apparently play in 2021. I know that might surprise you considering there's a lot of these that are that'll be like, oh shit, we touched this once. Maybe for five minutes and then we completely forgot about it. So, Deep Rock Galactic, in my opinion, has actually been one of those games that I would consider it good. If not, it's been getting better progressively because the devs have obviously been updating it, like, periodically, like, time after time. Also, I can just see now, for some reason, it's not popping up with the with the things, but thank you very much for, for the subs, Alex and Pablo. There's your sound alert browser source is offline. Yeah, but it's not necessarily that. I can quickly change that. Give me a second, let's see. So if I click over to the main scene quickly, where you won't be able to see me then, and I grab this, go back to the review scene, the okay so it should be there now so yeah it should now do the things didn't beforehand because we weren't on the right group okay. so yeah i would say deep rock galactic would be good for me like it's one of those games where i feel like if we had to go revisit it now it would still be worth playing or if not there'd be more content in it in general Next on the chopping block. Give me a second, I'm just trying to move something. For some reason my feed is getting a little bit broken. There we go. If I, if I was to say to you, I know it's whenever we're, we're, we're talking about experiences that occurred this year, but for me, Deep Rock was great. It was a great experience when we first started playing it, and then obviously as as it lost kind of charm as, yeah, as time went on. In a way. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing is like, again, this is based on our current experiences, I guess, with something. So I like, as you say, it was great when we started the same way I would have said something like Dota was great when we started and progressively moved down when you're interested in it is like, ooh, I'm not so sure about yeah. that anymore. But you know, you know, you're an influencer when you can when you hold reviews on your feelings about things more so than the product itself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Deep Rock is fine with good. Valheim, Valheim's a game good. we didn't revisit because the devs have just not updated it ever since we initially got it. Basically, they, and the they one did, time they did, they to, uh, yeah. well, no, the one time they did, I went in with Dan and we took a look at the game to try and see, like, what the big updates were and. They were all very, like, finicky little cosmetic things. Nothing necessarily gameplay-wise. Like, Dan and I, at some point in the game, we walked into, like, a zone or area that just wasn't finished, because obviously it's still early access and all that jazz. 
And at that point, we were like, oh, so this must be coming eventually. A at that point in time when we played, it was probably like last year, February. And as far as I'm aware, that area is still not finished in the game. So it's like, well, they haven't added anything to that area. So yeah, from that perspective, I would say Valheim, it was okay for its experience. But once you've gone through like everything in the game, it's like there's nothing more there for us to do, if that makes sense. Like unless you feel like getting into the weird like building side of it, but part of the building side of that game, which was frustrating, was everything decayed, so you could never build a permanent structure. I um I would put it in the same league as Deep Rock at the moment because we're relating current feelings about about such things. So I kind of view it on par with Deep Rock in terms of its of, of would I play it again like tomorrow? It's like to you, it seems like it's more of an okay, which is interesting. Yeah. And again, it's your list, so leave it on. Don't keep doing what. Okay, well, let's put it like this. If it's good, would you want to play it like now? Is I guess the question. I would play Valheim now. Okay, then it should be here. In the same way, Five. Rock would be for me good then as well, and CS:GO would be okay. Whereas, like, I don't really want to play it now, but maybe sometime. Not all the time. Yeah, you are hearing that it might. Well, I don't know. We tried Ark actually. I don't think we tried Ark last year, did we? You tried Ark very briefly, and it was so poorly optimized and unplayable on your hardware, even with drivers updated, that you literally put it down and were like, no, thank you. Give me a second. Ark. We're going to put Ark on the bad area. <laughs> Just pretend it's there, because I don't have an image for Ark, and I can't change that. <laughs> Yeah, That's just a text pass. That's what it gets. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, so I'll explain my 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 reasoning for why I put Ark on the bad side of this list and like like that very quickly, as um I actually now that I recall I tried playing Ark with Eva, and yeah. we loaded oh, in. I remember. Yeah, we loaded yeah. into a server. And what had happened was whoever was on that server had basically built like an indestructible box around the spawn area so that you actually just couldn't get into the game physically. Like there was no way out of the spawn area. So it was like, okay, cool. People have basically closed the server off, this public server off from the rest of people. Um, same thing happened on the next one we tried. And at that point it was like, it's just not worth trying. If that's like the kind of community or people that you get, it's like, mm, I think not. So. Yeah, like hardcore bad toxic, experience. Yeah. Bad experience with Ark. But also, I remember you telling me that it ran at like 42, because we tried it sometime before that, maybe a year before that even, like six months before that, and like it would not run. Yeah. They were telling me like it was just so, it was like like 40, like 30 to 40 FPS, low settings kind of thing. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to move this. I'm just going to have to imagine Ark is in the bad area for now. I don't okay. want to leave a text file there, because it'll pop behind the scene every time I try and drag something. So just imagine Ark is there. It is the invisible bad. Okay, so the next one on our list is we have Splitgate. Okay. Yeah, I also think Splitgate is really just it's average as hell. Again, I would never play it without friends. So it's like in like CS CSGO leagues. Also just commenting on what uh, Pablo and Alex are saying. We tried a private lobby, but I don't think my internet was good enough or uh, my computer was good enough to host a server of Ark, if that makes sense. Like, the game is... They're probably talking about remote hosting, like, like... Ah. Of, of a virtual machine or by paying, like, three or five, what is it, like, probably, like, ten bucks a month or something like that. I don't know if they have services like that, but they could. Oh, they do. Yeah, oh. they do. Let's see. Also, Pablo's saying it is good to see face again. Yeah, it's weird looking <laughs> at my face. I feel a little rounder, but other than that, I'm good. So a little bit more tan. So that's always a pleasant thing. Oh. Also, Mark is very tan. Oh. You are. Pulled out. <laughs> yeah, so this is the next one's actually gonna be an interesting one is do you remember Magicka? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Magic is not something I would want to play like right now, but sometime oh. for sure. Is it below average? Definitely not. Um, no, it's a good It's like, a it's good, good game. It's fun. The, the only problem with the game I obviously ever had was uh, when we were talking about like Ark, this game handles like Ark, except it's 
been made by like three people, which doesn't say a lot. Like it overtaxes my computer for what it is, which is insane. But like the actual gameplay and stuff like that, and like the creativity in, uh, in Magic is actually really fun. I can't imagine He's trying Twitch. to play it with more people. Alex Twitch, Alex, Alex brought up, yeah, he brought up Splitgate and his Twitch Prime rewards showed up and he has Splitgate cosmetic codes. <laughs> I promise you there's no uh, there's no tie-ins and I'm not being paid by any means to like advertise any particular game. How interesting that Ron, huh? <laughs> this is where like I don't know something would pop up in the corner being like buy this now. Like uh, what's it like God of War on sale like only 40 bucks on Steam go now. So the next one is Call of Duty Black Ops 3. We apparently played that in 2021. Did? I know it was for very long. I'll put that in below average, honestly, at this point. It, 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 I don't think we, like this year, I don't think there was... Yeah, I don't see a much. point in revisiting it right now. Like, not compared to any of these other ones. I would revisit any of these other titles before Black Ops 3 right now, I think. I mean, Black Ops 3, yeah. we're only really playing again for the zombies as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing is, uh, yeah, we were only playing it for the zombies. And even then, uh, what was hindering us with playing it for the zombies was, one, it's got a massive price tag to literally anything if you want any of the additional extra maps. On top of that, at least one to two people, whenever we play a card game, someone can't run it. It just doesn't work. Yeah, and, true. Yeah. I mean, that's, always, that's I think that's always why it's been put below average for us is, COD is good if it works for everyone. We've never had it consistently work with everyone in our friend group from, you know, like back when Kelvin was around. So like when we were like 15. So in 12 years, we've never had a COD that works for everyone. <laughs> which is pretty, like, pretty it's impressive. It's not a good ratio. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard Vanguard's not very good, Pablo. Alex is saying Black Ops 2 was amazing. Apparently the shooter mechanics, are, like the, the whole multiplayer suite is really watered down and the shooter mechanics are... At their core are okay, but like a lot of everything else that made it great and the progression and stuff and the balancing is pretty bad. The maps are boring, etc. etc. I've yeah, heard, heard Bang God's not very good. Made terrible as well. They did something oh, right. where they changed it to I guess not be round based anymore. Which was immediately like, what have you done? That's like part of the whole point of zombies, is it's part of its like archaic flair in a way. Yeah. Okay, next yeah. one on the list. I, I I you obviously know my opinion on this one because I've put out a review for it which is Hades so, oh yeah it's a great game no it really is a great game even I'll admit that I would only put it in good for me personally but it's objectively a great game but uh, again it's about your experience and you had a great experience with it you played the shit out of it so yeah I really can't say I didn't like even though if I look back on Steam I'm just gonna go find my library quickly let's see uh, sort by let's see Hours played. I played Hades for 93.4 hours while it was at least online. We yeah. should probably, nice or well, you should probably justify the inconsistency with respect to the fact that, like, although Hades, you put Hades as great, you wouldn't play it now because you've kind of fully played everything you feel. Yeah, well, I mean that is an exception. It's, it's, to our, our it's like it's it, it's it's weird. I think I think rather just view it instead of viewing it like would you play it now? Just view it from the perspective of like, what is your what is your most lasting feeling about the game? I think you know that's I mean? a really good way of putting it. Like impression. This is your impression. Yeah. Of the game what right what now. impression did it leave you with this year? Because mm -hmm. again, some stuff like CS:GO and stuff. You obviously it's like over CSGO, time. It's yeah. like COD is not yeah. a bad game, but its last impression of us was pretty poor. So yeah, yeah. low average last impression. Okay, so the next one on is Resident Evil 2. That one I obviously got to play through uh, on stream last year in full. And I'd previously actually played through it the year before. So I would say it still falls into the great category. It's very, very seldom it's ever I want to play through a single player game that I've done like for like multiple times, if that makes sense. And I've beaten it on both of the different characters because you have two different alternate routes. So. Yeah, I've probably played through the, the campaign essentially about four times. So, yeah, it's a great game. It's a great uh, zombie game for sure.
it's a Hades song. I'd probably like it. I'm not sure which one. Is it uh, in the was it in the blood or for the blood? That one. I take it you obviously don't have any real perceptions of RE2 because you didn't get to play it as far as I'm aware. Correct. Ah, so next is the Pinko Park. I don't know if I'm saying <laughs> I didn't right. play this either. Huh? That's why I don't I know what the name either. is. Kapunko Park. Pico. Pico Park. Which, if I scroll down, try and find where it is. Yeah, Pico Park. That's it. Pico Park. Pico is funny as hell. It, it was, but honestly, I'm putting it in the bad category because we paid for it and it was over in an hour. And the variation per level was really not that great. I feel like we could have gotten something better. It's like yeah, I know with you a game is going to automatically get a shit rating if if the lasting impression was poor value for money, <laughs> or like yeah. just poor value or whatever. Your your like, your person who doesn't doesn't appreciate fleeting cons like fleeting things <laughs> if the, unless they're priced really appropriately. Yeah, I'll say as much with that that it's like I think we got over some of the variation at some point. It was kind of funny, <laughs> but, I, but yeah. <laughs> Alex. Oh, Alex, I feel you, I do. <laughs> Sorry, Alex, it's going in the bad category. <laughs> Moving on is Unturned. He's, he's, he's a stubborn guy, you can't. Yeah. Unturned is fucking, d fucking straight to dumpsters here. <laughs> like, below bad. Okay, yeah, based on our experience with it, like, would I play COD or Unturned? I would rather play COD. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to shove that in the bad section, too. Can I not say it's as bad as Ark? Hmm. The thing is, I could try Ark again. <laughs> I, mean, and... I mean, you need like another tier, it looks like. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I was going to say, the thing is, I could try Ark again and I might get a better experience. I could try Pico Park and I know that there's not going to be any variation in the experience <laughs> whatsoever. Like, I played it with all of my friends, so I already know what what I could get like out of it, if anything more, and I'm not getting anything more from that. At least you, you, Ark you maybe squeeze, has. You squeeze this... <laughs> You squeezed the sponge dry, and the sponge gave you dysentery, so yeah. you're not happy. The sponge also cost me 50 rand for an hour, which is like, holy shit, that's not not great. Yeah, so Unturned, we didn't actually speak about Unturned, and what, what, what are problems with that. It's laggy, they drop you into a place, you have no idea what you're doing. It's hard, everyone is looks like trash, the game is like really poorly optimized. It was just... Oh, and it changed fuck all in the three years since we've played it last, you and yeah, I, by the way. True. Should also change, we should mention that. And on top of that, it's like, there's just straight up better options. Like, if you're looking for a zombie survival, like, open world game, we'll get to them. But yeah, I feel like it's on the bottom end of the tier right now. So yeah, what's the word for it? Alex is saying I should play, play Dark, Dark Souls. Souls. Oh, I'd fucking watch that stream. <laughs> I tried Dark Souls 3 once a few years back. I couldn't get past the first boss, so I quit there. So yeah, there will not be a Dark Souls 3 stream because that was like, I realized that this is too much for me. So I cut that right there. It, it, it definitely, depending on, casual. depending on... What did you say, Andrews? Filthy casual. <laughs> to be fair, I tried beating the first boss by playing as like that unarmed person that runs around in a loincloth. So I don't know if I was at a severe disadvantage or not. But that was the only way I wanted to Doesn't try and... change casual. Huh? Doesn't change anything. <laughs> All right. But I was gonna say it's also it's, it's whether or not you you would want to stream yourself in a, like going through an exercise in frustration. Also, it doesn't seem like your your stream archetype. I don't know. I've done that before. Like, and I've never enjoyed being frustrated on stream. So. I was gonna say like like it's a, it's a kind of th it's not the kind of guy to play like Jump King or fucking Impossible Game or that kind of shit on stream. You may have done it, but it's not really your mo. Yeah. I don't exactly get very angry on stream too much, but like there are you some don't, games you don't like want that, to. Let's put yeah, it that way. There are some there are some games that will just trigger me like to another level where I'm like, like I know I've gotten like violently angry at Dan at previous times playing Overwatch, and that's like a very rare exception. <laughs> also, Overwatch is not on this list. I know that now. Dota stream when? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, Actually, so then, I don't think that would be ag ag aggravating. I think that would just be depressing. Uh, yeah. Like, like severely depressing. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah, carry on. So the next one on for us is Halo, the Master Chief Collection. 
Interesting. Oh, the Master Chief collection. Yes, not, not infinite. Infinite the Master Chief collection. <sighs> Can I be brutally honest? I think Dan will really hate, but I. Oh well, no, but we have Varsity because I played all of them. Hey. Wait, what? Um, on 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 the Master Chief collection because I had it through Game Pass for ages. Yeah. But I played everything, and Halo Two. It's it's just like. <laughs> I would put Halo 2 as good, and I would put Reach as below average. But it puts me in a weird position where I'm like, I don't know. And then if you want to talk about the co-op experience, then the co-op experience is definitely below average. Because the netcode is still so dog shit that, um, <laughs> fucking Overwatch. I'm just putting a list yeah. of things which I've completely forgotten about somehow. Which are these three. Halo Infinite's actually not on this list either, so... We'll come. We'll swing back around to these ones, I guess. But I mean, I think, for me, I would say the, the I'd still. Oh, fuck. I don't. I think okay, probably for me. Okay, so it's gonna go to below average then, averaging us, because for me it was fucking you horrible. Bad. I fucking hated that. It was the worst multiplayer experience I've ever had trying to play a campaign, where there was no visible like, it was, like. <sighs> The fact that it's just straight up broken, like the multiplayer runs fine, but then straight up when you try to go to single player campaign, you can't play with your friends unless they're literally next door to you. Like Mark and I had like 250 ping across from each other, regardless of whatever we try to do. Like you couldn't fix it just because of the net code. But the thing and is, it doesn't make MS, sense. Our MS pinging IP to IP was like 60 or something yeah. like that. So yeah. It really didn't make sense. And at the time of when we were playing it as well, like progression in terms of like whatever weird like battle pass thing that they had in the game, that, as far as I remember, playing single player like campaign didn't get you anything. So you had to play the multiplayer if you wanted any way to customize your Spartan whatsoever. They've late they've later added that in, so that's at least A plus. But still, we just could never get Reach to work. And for the record, for people in chat. Hey Halo 2 Anniversary is probably, it's a, it's, it's definitely a good game. Even like this year, I would consider it a good game. Yeah. But like, it's a single player campaign experience. Multiplayer campaign experience across multiplayer was the internet. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's fair enough. What's next? So Pablo is saying you're done. he liked something in Halo, which was the melee is always an insta-kill. In the yeah, back of the head. in the back of the head. Yeah. So next up is Sea of Thieves. Uh, it's okay. You did apparently play that. <laughs> yeah, Sea of Thieves, I think, is definitely in the okay branch. I would... Like, uh, wanted to, if someone asked you to play it today? Yeah, well, like, if our friend group was like, hey, do you guys want to come play this? I'd be like, okay, sure, we'll reinstall it, so... I actually would not. Oh, no, really? <laughs> yeah, but there we go. That's actually good. I, I literally feel like I've actually... Huh? Sorry, Anders. But I actually feel like I've I've gotten as much mileage as I'd care to out of that game for the time being. Yeah, it was... Like, even with friendship. I think part of the problem uh -huh. for it is that there's not really much to do. <laughs> I need to turn Andrews up slightly. I can't... <laughs> Andrews is just like... Your, your presence here is a few stray comments and nothing more. Turning his sound up by like 10 decibels because I can't hear him when he ran and sparsely talks anymore. So we're going to we're gonna leave it in okay then. Yeah, we did play the Pirates of the Caribbean at all. Oh, he's right! Holy shit, that means it wasn't very memorable, was it? I mean... Like, it was when mostly I think just about us, that, like, cracking memes about, like, Jack Sparrow and Johnny Depp and shit. Mm. And even then, the that expansion was slightly broken. Because us doing stuff required us to glitch through the walls and stuff. Kika fell out of the map. Uh, at some point, our boat literally, like, U-hauled, and we got teleported back, and we had to redo the entirety of the last mission. That now. I don't know if you remember that or not. It I do, yeah. It really destroyed our progression. So, yeah, I think OK is uh, a decent place to put it. Yeah, let's, let's leave it there. Next up, Jackbox Party Box 8. I enjoy Jackbox. It's fun. With friends, I think it can be a lot more fun. So, I would say it's probably good to okay. I'm just 
trying to think on that. Yeah, Jackbox is good. Yeah, I think Jackbox is good. Like, I've always enjoyed all of the different game modes in, in a lot of them. I would say it's okay, but it's not really my type of game. So Yeah, I can understand know. that. It's more of a spectacle than... So I think it's better to watch than it is to play, personally. Possibly, yeah. It is also a party game, so party games probably fall into that sort of genre. This is true. We haven't played 8 as much as 7. 7 is on the list somewhere down here. So, next one on is Subnautica Below Zero. Subnautica Below Zero I actually really enjoyed. I still enjoy that branch of game, like, a lot. I don't think it was as great, like, as good as Subnautica 1, but... I still enjoyed it and had a blast going through the entire experience. Uh, it was at least a little bit more fleshed out too. I think it was a little shorter than the first one as well, but there was a much broader variety of things and the quest line was a little bit more involved, I think. Okay, so next one on is the Seven Days to Die. We actually did play that as a group last year quite a bit. Really? Yeah, I remember there was time, I think, was it last year that I, I did uh, the Genesis house? I can't remember. No, uh, that was the year no, before that. Ago. Oh. Well, we did play it last year, apparently. I think it would have to fall into okay, then. Yeah. I feel, I definitely felt like the last time we, we had a crack at it, it wasn't, it wasn't as successful. Yeah, no, definitely. I feel like we even had extra people. Oh, that's right. Yes, we did. We did. We did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did play it. And it was... It was fun, but yeah, we've done everything I think there is to be able to do in that. Not just that, it was like... It was a bit laggy, and then it wasn't, and for some people <laughs> it was worse than others, and... Uh, you know. Pablo's remembering that in Subnautica Below Zero, there was a point where I had to try and find, like, a lady. Who she gave you the coordinates for an island, and she's like, I will be southwest, or something like that. And if you headed southwest, you wouldn't find her. You had to head, basically, like, at a very specific angle through, like, a bunch of, like, icebergs to be able to find her house. And it was just impossible. I spent about an hour and a half just looking for someone. Seven days to die, shit, I'm... I can see that. It's It's been out... It's it been in alpha on PC for, like... Eight years, and it's still not optimized, so I can't imagine they've optimized it well for consoles. Next one on is Raft. Raft is good. Raft is a good game. I played Raft with Eva for actually quite a lot of last year. It's basically like a game where you get trapped on a little, like, raft, and you've got to haul in, like, junk. Um, you, keep, and slowly... you keep growing the raft. And... Yeah. And yeah. you sail around eventually, you get motors, you get to explore the ocean a bit. Uh, and they've been expanding it. They've been expanding it with like updates and all sorts of different stuff. There's like an actual story to the game too. So the yeah, we've it's, been like a sky, it's like a moving bit. skyblock experience. Very true. As a multiplayer raft is better. That is very true. As a single player, it's probably not going to be as fun. Multiplayer is definitely where it's at with that one. So how you doing, Jarex? You wasted money when it came to that, not raft. Wait, what? Uh, it means I, seven days to die. Uh, yeah, because we're talking about how it's, it's like dog shit. Yeah, seven days to die needs some improvement. I think it's definitely just okay for now. The next one is going to be kind of controversial for both of us, Mark. We've got Borderlands 3. <laughs> does the end justify the means, of, or does it ruin the experience? You tell me. I actually just got bored of the game and like, Two thirds through it, yeah. so I'd probably put it just like okay. If you're, I, I feel like okay is even a little generous, but yeah, I'm I'm probably say okay. Average. Yeah, okay, cool. I can agree with that. I, yeah. From an experience point of view, what we expected from Borderlands Three versus what we got it was below average. Yeah, we're doing just, right. Just there. the actual, just like mechanically and in terms of loot distribution. I mean, we were getting like ridiculous amounts of legendaries that actually just weren't like interesting. More like relevant they were just like incremental improvements on the legendaries we already had 
Yeah, the game suffered very much from its loot systems being completely trashed compared to Borderlands 2, which in its own wasn't great. I remember when we finished through Borderlands 2, when we'd finished Borderlands 2 on our first playthrough, we'd never gotten a single legendary, I don't think. If maybe not just one. Like, at the maybe most. Maybe one, yeah. And that may have just been, like, story given. But when it came to uh, Borderlands 3, we would kill a boss and he would drop eight. Like, just one boss. It was like, if everything is just dropping a legendary, that term means nothing. Like, uh, I, haven't played, I haven't played the new DLC, Pablo. Yeah, we never bothered with the DLCs. The no. Wait. And he's also right, I agree with Alex on the price as well. It was... It was expensive, I think yeah. I paid. I think I paid nearly full price. I had I had like a disc... I, I paid... I think I had something either in my Steam wallet or I got a discount off of buying it. Yeah, I, I bought it on Epic and I got it cheaper on Epic, I think. Yeah. Also, I just... Yeah. Going back to what Jarex is saying, um, what's the word for it? The Borderlands, yeah, we've completely finished Borderlands 2. We beat every single DLC and we did it on, I think, the New Game Plus. So we got the actual literal maximum we could ever out of Borderlands 2. So we had kind yeah. of high expectations of Borderlands 3 going into it when you consider that it's like, it set up a high standard of we were like, okay, we enjoyed this. We enjoyed the loot grind in a way. We got to do it in the storylines and the areas and the enemies were fun, if not challenging in their own way. But three was just a chore. Like we didn't even get through the first playthrough before we were like, okay, this is getting like didn't want to do all the side boring. missions. Yeah, which literally, is not great. We, they were part, toward the end we were like, fuck. Also, Pablo, what Pablo was saying is, what do we think about the, the new game coming out, Tiny Tina's Wonderland? Um, I, 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 to be honest with you, I'd just be op curiously, what was it, cautiously optimistic would be the way to put it. Yeah, I I'd probably, I, I definitely wouldn't pay full price for it, but I won't pay full price for most things if I can avoid it. But yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right, sir. You're quite correct. Same with you guys. Even finished the first zone. Yep, we actually did play it with Jarex Borderlands Three. It just it didn't hold anyone's attention for very long, so it's sad. Okay, Perhaps. next up on the list then, because I think we we're done with that one. Here's five. Ah. Oh. For quite a bit of time. I honestly want to put it in somewhere between good to great. It uh, was. I think I think it's good to call it good's quite. Fair, yeah. It's very fair. The thing is, I, I enjoyed would, I, the I shit out of like, it, and considering yeah, we played yeah. it on the highest difficulty and we died a tremendous amount of times in that game, I'm surprised we never got, like, I'm over this. The same way we would have done very easily with a lot of other games. Like, it still, it held us, and we learned the story. Like, we were actually enjoying that, so, yeah. I, 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 I we, we, play, we played it more than four. And for sure. but I enjoyed it. I, I, what I mean is, I enjoyed it more than four, and I thought four was like a good experience. So yeah. Also, I wanted to point out that like Horde was okay, and multiplayer was a little bit better than okay. And although we didn't play either for long, they were actually like they were actually things decent. In that. Yeah, like you could play them, or if you wanted to get into them, they they were definitely options for you. <laughs> I didn't realize you had a, you had your own Ripper mode, Ron. That's pretty cool. How could you forget? That was how, like, almost the introduction to Pablo, uh, like, Pablo's oh, introduction yeah. to this PS5 was, he put up, I think it was like 162 rip emotes in one stream because we got to fight the Matriarch so many times. That's right. No, but the, the reason I forget is because I didn't have it open most of the time. Stream. That was running Gears. Gears of War was great to watch Mark slowly losing his sanity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can forget that. Yeah, there was, I remember even before the Matriarch, there was one point where we had like, we had to defend against like a group of incoming enemies where we were stationed on the top of like a bridge area and shotgunners were just, they would just slash you and it was terrible. Pond memories. Very yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, I think it was good. Good game. This vibe's good. Risk of Rain 2. Okay. Is very okay. I mean, Easy. I don't That's think okay. it's below average at all or bad. It's good, good playtime. Still enjoy, still enjoyed it, but I wouldn't. I'm not in no rush to play it again. Yeah. So I think that's fair. Yeah, your favorite in the park area near begging. Yeah, you're the beginning. He means yeah. yeah. That's true. I mean, Gears Five did have its glitches. It was definitely becoming a lot less stable as we progressed through the game. <laughs> <What? See that. laughs> We're trying, have... to, we're trying to fuck with things as well. Oh, you played Jack a lot of that game as well, I, I remember, did. yeah. But what's the word for it? It never stopped the AI. Like, at some points, 
um, our, I was going to say our Dom, but it's not Dom. It's, what is his name now? Um, this can't Dom. Basically. I mean, I can't remember. J it was JD and... Not J it wasn't JD, it was the other one. Um, I know, but I'm saying JD and uh, D, D, JD, no. That's the first one. Damn it. I can't remember his name. Daryl? Daryl? Let's assume his name is Daryl. But Daryl basically was flying around the map at certain points and like super zooming to doors to open them because it was scripted and stuff. We had yeah, enemies yeah. Like, like stuck in walls and stuff. And you remember that there were also like uh, invisible walls that you could hide behind <laughs> where there was just nothing there. Also, yeah, Risk of Rain is kind of a, it's like a rogue-esque game where you drop into a map, kill stuff, teleport to a new zone, kill more stuff. Third person, enjoy. third person over the, sh over the shoulder roguelite with, um, with like, you, you basically, the, the gimmick of it more than anything is you build, the, the build you make, you have to make in that run. And it only, it only really pertains to that run for the most part. Yeah, so it has a lot of replayability yeah. if you want to try a lot of different things, I would assume. Yeah, so Risk global see. domination. <laughs> I don't know how interesting that'd be to watch though. Next up is Gears Tactics, which both of us actually did get to play. I eventually did finish it. Um, I would say it was good. I need to, yeah, I need to reinstall it. I, I think it's a good game. I think it's also a good game. It has a really good story to it. Um, it's not as, what's the word for it? Some of it is a little bit less like a like a dumbed down XCOM in a way, but in some ways it's a little better than XCOM. I was gonna say I think it's more like a streamed down, streamlined yes. XCOM. I, like there were but... certain features of it that I preferred over the style of XCOM, where XCOM had its weird like map thing, which made made you have to strategically like attack certain points and stuff like that in order to make sure you would like XCOM stressed you <laughs> if that makes sense about like oh what am yeah. I gonna do uh, in the grander scheme of things because I can be messing up by doing certain missions instead of others. Whereas with Gears, it was very linear, whether it was you wanted to go left or right. And you only had to yeah. really worry about what was happening during the mission in front of you, rather than having this like feeling in the back of your mind that by doing this, I'm effing up that, which is not great. You don't yeah. want to be playing four dimensional chess in a tactics game. At least not a, like, I don't want to anymore. We <laughs> <laughs> finished our Civ 5 game <laughs> years ago. <laughs> God, we have so many unfinished Civ games. I hate watching this on my phone. I'm sorry, Mr. Pablo. Gotta do the zombie mode on Risk, though. He means Risk Double Domination. The zombie mode? Like Risk the board game? The zombie mode? Yes, yeah. I never knew that. Huh. You hate watching this on your phone. I'm sorry, Rick. Typing Next. is faster, but small screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one on, we have Underlords. Como? Huh? Oh! Yeah. Oh. Underlords. Yeah, uh, the ripoff of, uh, what's it like? Auto Dota, chess. Auto chess, yeah. Which I think is. Below better. average. Okay. We're, we're well, getting... it's up to you. But like, I, I'll go below average. It's it's functionally okay and fun. It is, but it's also completely stopped development. What? Did, play we, like did, we, last year. did we actually play? Well, I played. We yeah, to, to be fair. I did only play like one game last year. I played more the year before that. Yeah. We played a little bit of it. And at that point, they were still in the beta. And they were like, okay, here's like the the beta season pass. If you go back now, the beta season pass is still active. And it says it will last indefinitely. Because Dota is, you know, like the Valve has basically just given up on the game entirely. So whatever current meta exists is the meta that will exist for the rest of time. So oh, from really? that perspective, yeah. So huh. from, from that, I would think, okay, it's dead. It is a literal dead game. Um, so I yeah. feel like you're not going to have a very fun time. Whatever strategies have been developed, they're probably That's out true. there and it, not, it, it'll uh, be stable. That, that type of game definitely lives and dies by meta change. And if there is no, if there's no, if there's pure stagnation, then it's fucking finished. That's... Yeah, I should point out, if you missed it, we're, we're not, we're not ranking them by the quality of the game per se, or like in an objective fashion. We're, we're literally ranking it based on what impression did it last leave with us? the last time we played it which is extremely than, yeah yeah but it's extremely abnormal a way to do this sort of thing but it's just how we feel like doing it yeah this is again it's pretty ad hoc on how we're deciding these rankings like there's no again it is just opinionated purely like the impression it, le it left the last time we played it i like the stream deck too so... because i can switch between stuff so if i want to be away 
or I can come back within like a second. It's right. Here. It's like magic with the press of a button. Okay, the next one. Dota. <laughs> you actually, oh, you said so. I did. I actually played, I think, like four games of Dota last year. Crazy. They were... Why is it no tier below bad? <laughs> I know, right? I was going to say, that's going straight to the dumpster pile. I played four games and I'd never felt so angry as I'd been <laughs> playing those, those games. In the entirety of last year and like all the problems I've ever had with dealing with like work, my, like gym, uh, my family, uh, like moving with oh, HR, Jesus. with, uh, you know, like crossing different countries with the pandemic, um, you know, with like, I don't know, like advanced medical care if I ever needed it or like physical therapy or mental therapy. I would say Dota pretty much took the cake on. It was the worst objective experience I had last year. I, I low key, I low key think, and I don't want to trivialize this for people who are really suffering, but I, I low key think I might have like PTSD from Dota because actually thinking about Dota actually it makes me physically <laughs> unhappy. Like when I joke yeah. about it all the time, and sometimes like I saw Adrian playing, I thought, do I want to like do I want to do that? And like Dan was saying, oh he'd like to play, and but then the thought of actually when I think about what playing Dota actually entails, it makes me physically unhappy. So. Yeah. From what I recall... Well, Jax, that's your problem, not <laughs> mine, man. I, <laughs> I was going to say, from what I recall of my experience with Dota within, within those four games, between the Blinding Rage, I remember that I had played a, a support, and I was like, okay, I'm supporting. And within the first five minutes, I was already being, like, flamed by the guy I was, like, trying to help uh, get farm. And it was just like... It's like, I'm literally here to help you and doing literally everything I can. And the guy is still like going off like a hotcake at me. And I was just like, huh. And then the next one did it the next game. And the same one after that. And it's like, like people have seemingly no chill or the people who still exist in that game are, it's like a very, it's... like the community is beyond, like beyond words at this point. I would throw it. Yeah, it's, if I could. The, thing, the thing is, if you, if you don't know, if you're in any role that you, any given role you're playing in that game, if you don't know, the latest meta, the latest yeah. strats, and if you don't, if you don't exceed and excel in like every facet of that position, then because all you're left with now, Ron, the the player base is whittled, and now what you're left with is the purists. Basically, so yeah. you're only playing with the purists, and it's it's not in, it's not exclusively mechanically driven like CS is. So, yeah, if you're on part of it's TI, like, you get playing. If you true. make a wrong decision, it's yes. Like the game. community is hot garbage, if not the worst community I've ever. Yeah, I, I I know people sh like like talk about league, and I know league is pretty pretty toxic, and I'm sure it could probably be worse. But it, I honestly think it's in contention between those two communities for like the worst in gaming. Yeah. Like it, it, the the thing is, like if you're doing well, people aren't like, oh well done. They just shut up. And this the moment you make a single mistake, they fucking dogpile and like it's relentless. It's just, and then you, and the moment people start bitching, you start losing the game as well because people. So, yeah, it's Jesus. You can just talk about Dota <laughs> for like months. Yeah, it's like if there was an ultra bad tier, that would put that would be there. It is the worst. Uh, okay, so oh. the next one on. We played this one was an interesting one because. Surprisingly, the last time we played this was the 7th of January 2021, Mark. So this was like probably the first thing we'd played that year. Um, and I'm sure you will remember it. Which is Door Kickers. Oh, it's below average. I think Badly. below average is bad. I mean, it was fun, but it's like, for what it is, it's like, yeah, this is a little bit below average in some ways. Like the, it's more of a, there are better, it's kind of like it falls into that zone of like, kind of like unturned. It's executed like, in better ways. Yeah, there by are other, by other things, titles, yeah. Yeah, there are concepts out there that are executed better than this. But yeah, it was still decent for what it was. Pablo, so lose all games to get friendly people, got it. No, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> It does not work that way. What is Door Kickers? Door Kickers is a top-down, like, tactical game 
where you are basically like a SWAT team. Think of like um, Rainbow Six Vegas, but like top down. If you've ever um, seen XCOM, imagine XCOM except it's like uh, it's not turn based. It's what do you call it? Like real time. Real time. Yeah, real time XCOM basically. Is but it is pausable. Way. You can also pause to strategize with your like guy. But but all actions are carried out by you and like in real time. Yeah, literally SWAT, what but XCOM or Rainbow Six or. I can see that. Good luck. We have put it on the OK section. Uh, have fun, mate. Yeah. So. And just, just remember, no matter how bad it gets, just think to yourself, I'm not. At least I'm not playing Dota. Oh, damn it! He's just reminded me. Notepad. Oh fuck, Wasteland. Yeah. <laughs> Wasteland three. It's not on the list. Yeah. We'll pull back around to that. Okay, so next one on the list: Phasmophobia. Oh. Um. Phasmophobia, I quite enjoyed I that. Was good. Honestly, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I good. Was... I'd play that again tomorrow. I think so. Like if our friend think, group was think, like, let's play this. Well, then, yeah. I think Teacup and Andrews have played it a lot more than us, which kind of I think a lot of that game is that like. Happens. Agreed. We were the yeah. same way with I think Dota to Dan, where by the time Dan was like, "Hey guys, yeah. this is fun," we were already over the hill. Exactly. Yeah, Cause... we'll put Wasteland back on the list at some point. <laughs> Don't worry. The good section is now full. I uh, actually should. I wonder how many collective hours I have in, in in Dota, like between all the accounts now. I would guess roughly equal to me, if not. Yeah, better. probably. So 4K, 4,000 hours, I think. Yeah, maybe. I played. I played quite a bit with uh, with uh, Andrews in in varsity. Well, not varsity, but college. Andrews, Jesus, not Andrews, Adrian. Yeah. That would be something. I was gonna say, let me know what rank you get, Alex. I'd be curious about that. Okay, so the next yeah, one. Yeah, we did. Is... I did. I did from yeah. high school release. Yeah. So, Karen, you're saying? Next one on is Resident Evil Village. It's honestly, I would put it in the great section. It's just a great horror game. Nothing really more to it. I know that some people even get to experience that game in VR because it apparently fully supports VR, and I can't even imagine how. Horrifying that must be as an experience like with full surround sound and all that jazz. It was good. It was still again I think it was scarier than eight um, Maybe a little shorter seven. than eight, but seven. overall it's the eighth one good. seven. This is seven. Yeah. Oh Right, I see. Sorry. No oh, village. I thought you said village. My uh, mistake. Next up is village though. So village uh, okay. also I'd put into the great section. I think it's still Capcom is just putting on it's good games. Been a good period for horror actually lately. I don't know if it's so much a good period for horror, so much as it is just a good period for Capcom. Um, I mean, Capcom has put out a lot of great games so far in the last yeah. few years. Ever since they developed Most... their new engine, they've been putting out good titles. Mostly. You got headaches too quickly, huh? Oh yeah, Pablo, yeah, that's right. I remember that. I mean, that. I did put out reviews for everything that's in the top right now, so... All means, yeah. I think that they're they deserve to be there in a way. Next one on is Gang Beasts. Okay. I think Gang Beasts. Maybe okay, close. maybe below average around really? that region. I actually enjoyed Gang Beasts I, quite a lot. I know you yeah. didn't have the best experience with it, but it is it's one of those things where I think it's a game where if you had a controller, it would be a much better experience in general for whoever was playing for sure. I think, yeah, I'll leave it in okay though for now, because I can make, that does make sense. Like, would I play it tomorrow? Not necessarily. Like, we would need a group to to, to influence us on that. Yeah, you need a full friend lobby. Yeah, you do, I guess. I, 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 I just know, like, for example, I, I played it like twice and that was it. And then you guys played it a bit more. Yeah. But I just had no inclination more. whatsoever to play it again. Based so. on our experience of when we played it, uh, yeah, I think it was good. I mean... Mark saying is okay, so I feel like our opinions will split down the middle. So we'll put it in okay for now because we're gonna run out of space and this is gonna get very small soon. This is also gonna be problematic. Next one on is Fallout 76. Ha. Huh. This is a hard one because the thing is It is actually. We got my impression of the game from the get-go was that it was hot garbage. 
And everything I'd ever been told about the game was that it is in a terrible state and that it is buggy mess and that it is not very fun. What I found was it's a buggy mess, but it was actually fun. So a little bit of a contradiction in its own. Um, like Yo, it's fun was... after after fucking years of patches, though. <laughs> Never yes. forget that. So yeah, it, and that has to be acknowledged. But I think it's which hasn't resolved which hasn't resolved the fact that it's a buggy mess either. No, but I mean that's a Bethesda thing. I feel like it's good. I feel horrible for saying that, but it's like. Uh, like, I had fun. I know Dan is still enjoying the shit out of it. I mean, he actually went and bought it after the Battle Pass started to end. It's complicated. I'll play it tomorrow, but it is good. Yeah. Does it expand downwards? No, it doesn't. It does not expand downwards. There's no moving. It exceeded expectations, that's for sure. But it'd be hard. It would have been hard for it not to also. Why is... Okay, you, Don't worry. you're going to confuse things like that. Sorry. but. <laughs> I was okay. just checking if there was a way to change the setting. This yeah. is a shit show right now. True. I mean, I don't know. I don't hold that much hope for Starfield, to be honest. Even though it's Todd's baby. There we go. Another list is back in place. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping Starfield's good, honestly. Pablo thinks it's ha. Mm, average. Elder Scrolls 6 apparently still in development. I would imagine so, and I hope so. So an engine development, meaning they, they haven't even they haven't even finalized the toolkit yet. Really? They're still that yeah. far away? Damn. Well, let's hope they don't release it today, or otherwise it will be terrible. Okay, so the next one on is The Evil Within. I thought it was okay. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, here yeah. we go. No, <laughs> I don't know what your experience of it was, but for me it was okay. It was confusing. No, as it was it, it it was okay. Again, because we we're on a five point spectrum here of opinion, it was okay, yeah. And it's definitely a one and done experience. You're not gonna like no inclination to replay that shit. The weird part is I feel like replaying that game would actually give you the best bang for your buck because it's they only explain anything by the time you're in the second or third last act. And by then it's like, okay, I the amount of stuff I've had to sit through and go through that's been like a, what on earth is going on? Where am I? Who am I? What is this? What is that? Nothing is explained for so long. By the time that they do explain it, it's already about to end. And it's like, okay, that didn't really mean my experience with the game was the greatest. It was interesting, though. That, that's, that's true, you know, because interestingly enough, I had played it many years ago, and then I replayed it. Not, not like, not fully through, but I knew, like, the gist of it. Yeah. And then I played it again, so I probably knowing some stuff made it more enjoyable. You know, That's the same nice. way that you watch a movie and notice more details the second time around. Oh boy, this list is going to get small quickly. Yeah, it was. It is an interesting game. You're right. You know, by the looks of it, the game, the list shouldn't actually get that much bigger if I'm not wrong. Which is good to hear. We've got two more rows of stuff to go through. So let's see. Poppy Playtime. Poppy Playtime was okay for its time. It, like it's, it, it's um, it's like Markiplier bait. It's like for that type of YouTuber. Feels yeah, like the, the problem with it is, is that it's like it's twenty minutes and it's over, and that that is it. But what you got, it was okay. But it, whoa, what happened there? Did it make a whole new? It did. Ah, oh, it expands the category, huh? Okay, well that'll be good then. So yeah, it definitely it feels like it feels like something that exists For a very as more as like a mar marketing mechanism. Well, it it lives and dies by its ability to market itself to a certain sector or like demographic. So yeah. In reality, there was yeah, okay, only one I guess. moment in the game where there was a horror scene, and then the rest was barely just walking around doing like light puzzling. It wasn't very interesting, so. Yeah, I feel okay is the best it'll obviously ever get, if not maybe below average, I think. Yeah, it was pushing to be the next Five Nights type of shtick, with all say, with all the, the modern kiddos. Yeah, I'm gonna say below average until, like, I don't know, just the fact that they make you pay for something that's a 30 minute experience, like, and a lot too. It wasn't like a cheap, like, 20 minutes, so I feel like there could be more. Ooh, next one might be controversial too. We will see. It really did need more. We have Back for Blood. 
Back for Blood has a very strange, like, like leaves a very strange taste in my mouth when I think about it. Because there's a lot of it that I really like, and there's a lot of it that is really terrible. Like, on the side of, like, the bad, you have... The difficulty scaling is absolutely broken within the game. You cannot almost, you can basically, you can't beat the normal difficulty or the higher difficulty without resorting to cheap tactics or having played through multiple Hang on a times second, Mr. Mr. Pablo needs to go, so goodbye, uh, Mr. Pablo. Cheers, Pablo. Yeah, you'll have to pick this one up uh, afterwards. Enjoy work, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the man is speaking for us, but I don't think he's very wrong. Because the thing is, oh, I would I, honestly, I'd put it, I'd say it's okay. I don't, definitely don't think it's good. Yeah. It's... Here's Mr. Pablo. Yeah. The problem was you had a lot of weird stuff in it that was also like your progressions, like acquiring new cards to help you progress, are based on the fact that you succeeded in missions already. So you have this. Um, what's the word for it? You have a positive like reinforcement loop but you have a very high car you're, in, you're, you, you, you're encouraged achieving. you're encouraged to do you're actually encouraged to do the lower difficulties because yes. the rewards the rewards for grinding lower difficulties are far are worth more, more than trying than, to do it multiple yeah. times on the higher because you get nothing on the higher difficulties if you fail and so yeah. that tends to push you towards having to do the lower difficulty and you can't play it on a higher difficulty at all but then what's but the, the point of having that insultingly high yeah, yeah the lower the easy one was insultingly too, easy hmm. So that's why there's a big problem with that. I also felt that the cosmetic system in the game was lacking a lot. You basically had someone took a color wheel and they basically spun it five times and you were given that as a variation of the basic cosmetic that the original character had. And that was it. Then you had two sets of legendaries, both of which you couldn't actually acquire at all unless you'd get in, gotten to the end of like the card lines that were available in the game. So grindy. A lot of grinding. Yeah. It was a very, very grindy game, so I think below average is probably the best. But that's also the problem with it is there's a lot there that was good, like the actual movement and like mechanics of like, you know, like combat and all that felt very good. It was very fluid. Um, yeah, I actually, I actually didn't. Cons a lot of people said it was trying to be a, like a modern successor to, to obviously to Left 4 Dead, and it didn't succeed. I actually felt that it did. I think it was an okay game, personally. I think but you, there we go. I think you're probably right that it actually was a good or like a good moderate successor to Left Foot Dead, but the problem is I think it's like saying you could do a like a complete um what's the word for it? Like a remake of Pac-Man within the modern era probably wouldn't sell like hotcakes today. And that's just no, but one it fills it, it fills it fills the void because people were playing people still play left for dead yeah but, but I just it mean, definitely to my mind fills that void yeah yeah but i mean as in like what's the word for it i lost my train of thought now <laughs> sorry that's okay um i think it was along the lines of i feel like the player base or the community that like enjoyed um like you know how we seemingly go through eras where things like mobas are the popular thing then uh MMOs are the popular thing. Yeah, the trends. The auto chess. I feel like back then that was like one of the, not necessarily a trend, but something people really enjoyed, which I don't think as many people enjoy today, if that makes sense. So they're a little bit more critical of it um, when they're like, oh, this isn't as good as that because of the nostalgia goggles in a way. Whereas like, no, it is a pretty good successor, but it's just you enjoyed it back then more because that was the thing to enjoy. Or, it was fresh as well. Things. Yeah, that's true. For sure. Yeah. Next one on is Gothic. Next. Phone. So Gothic Phone has been an interesting case. I've obviously done that on streams quite a few times. Um, it's a 50-50, honestly. Gothic Phone can either be really good or really terrible. So I'm going to say it's okay. I don't really have any like opinions of it. I wouldn't play it, honestly, unless some other people I knew were around, at least. But it can be a bit, it can be a bit weird at times. It really depends on who, who shows up to try and do drawings. I've seen some amazing drawings. I've even posted them to the Discord before. When we've had, like, what I would consider winners of the night. I even have one of the pictures someone drew, like, saved on my phone. Just because it was one I really liked so much. So, 
So yeah, I think it's good. It's interesting because it's also like a unique experience into the artistic side of the world where you can see how well people can actually draw and how terrible you actually are in your drawing capacity. God damn, we really did play a lot of things that ended up being controversial to us. The next one on is Far Cry 5. Oh. Uh huh. It's okay. You think Far Cry 5 is okay? Yep. I think that's. I think that's fair. Yeah. Definitely overstated. It's welcome. Holy shit. It could have yeah. concluded what it needed to conclude, like so much earlier on, or at least introduced enough new mechanics and interesting concepts and stuff to keep going, like to keep interest. But there was very little incentive to do like any side missions after a point, outside Indeed. of having to progress by doing them. And yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I for think me. we also had issues that there was no organic transitions in the game. Was a big thing for yeah. us. Yeah. Like there was. Well, terrible. especially when you're trying to make it story driven, and then you do some contrived bullshit that like it's, you get captured twelve times, and it's like, wow, well, are you fucking idiot? You mean the you're, like, gun we down millions of people. And then you just lose yeah. control and flop to the ground, and then suddenly you're being captured again. That happened way too many times, I think. Stupid. Yeah, we next up have Amnesia the Dark. Was it, Am was it Re Amnesia Rebirth? Yeah, it was oh. Amnesia Rebirth. I did play that last Oh, I never year, watched you play it. Yeah, never watched it you play was... it. was... I'm going to put it in below average, let's see. It was... That is going away on stream. You might need to extend the, the window or, re or reduce huh? the size. Uh, Alex is telling you that the bad is cut off, basically, on, on your stream. You're going to have to reduce second. the size or move it a bit. just want to put the bottom down slightly. Takes like a second of adjustment. So 500. Yeah, that should be a little bit too much space, but that's fine because I'm sure the list will expand again. Yeah. Yeah, it was just overall, it was a, it was a weird experience. And I think I wouldn't, I'd like to say I enjoyed it, but it's one of those things that when you have to say you, you, you were trying to enjoy something that you know it's a below average experience. I, I, I enjoyed it for like three hours, maybe four hours. Maybe f I even say I might have even enjoyed it for like five hours. Mm -hmm. But any more than that, and it was like we were finishing it because we'd started it. And that's why it invariably left me feeling like I couldn't say it was a shit experience, but You're I definitely couldn't Parker say right like right I enjoyed it. Still. Yes, yes, Sam, what are you talking about? Sorry. Amnesia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was like, I don't remember what playing do you this. play it? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, there's something uh, wrong here, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I got confused. No, it's okay. But yeah, so yeah. no, you're still right with Far Cry though. Far Cry was Sorry, definitely carry on. As okay as it gets. Um, this is so mediocre. It's mediocrity pushed me to keep talking about it. We have Jackbox Seven, I believe. <sighs> yeah. I think Jackbox Seven was good. I think Jackbox Seven was better than Eight so far because we played it just because of the game modes. So we'll put it in. Keep it there for now. <sighs> Next up, did that push the... Yeah, it pushed it straight out. Hold on. Planes. And hold this again. Okay, I should be able to see again. Wow, that worked out almost perfectly. Cool. Next up, we have Pain. The Ring of Pain, which we played. <laughs> <laughs> we played that okay. on the 31st of December. Um, and we beat it on the 31st of December in, like, three hours, on, like, three plays. I think it's alright. It's an okay game. I think it's okay too. Interesting, but... interesting, interesting turn on the, like, the, I can't believe it's now a genre, but, like, interesting take on the card, like, the TCG roguelite Rogue -like, <laughs> yeah. experience. I mean, I guess that is a genre in its own now, ever since, uh... Oh, yeah. I would have to say that the... Was it the Spire game you played was probably the yeah. progenitor of that entire genre? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, definitely, I think. Okay, next up we have Outriders. So, Outriders to me, I would honestly have to say it was good. I enjoyed yeah, Outriders a lot. Like, probably a lot more than I know you and Dan enjoyed it, for sure. Correct. So. 
that's fine. It's as I say, it's your list. I still feel like I'm having my say, and that's all that matters. Mm. Uh, Next, we have. Well, I'm just trying to think about Outriders. What did I enjoy from Outriders specifically? Um, it was kind of like a more linear version of like a Mass Effect in a way. Like I enjoy those kind of like weird, surreal like world settings and stuff like that, where there's like a little bit of mystery somewhere. Yeah, you don't I, really I think I think much. it. Yeah, it on. succeeds. It succeeds in world building where games like Grim Dawn and Torchlight fail. That's how I look at it because it is an ARPG functionally. That's what it is. It's a looter shooter, or an ARPG, and I feel like the world building was a bit tastier. Uh, that's and the story was a bit tastier. I found surprisingly. I remember watching like reviews for Outrider before we'd played it, where people were like. I hate the main character because he's the generic or bland. And I was like, no, I really enjoyed my main character. It was really nice to see, like, I don't even know how to describe him. He was just, uh, like... In, in, entirely disillusioned, how I would describe him. Disillusioned. I don't know if that would be the right word I would describe him as, but it's... Well, oh, ambivalent to everything going on. Yeah, he was very, like, like... Not very caring, but you could still see that there was emotion behind, like, the parson, if that makes sense. Like, there were times where, like, the nuke was going off, and he was like, oh, fuck. Like, now I actually have to panic. Like, this is important. But there were also times where it was just outright funny, or he just didn't give a shit to the point that, like, he would kill people, like, I, violently. I, I, I think it resonates with... I think it resonates with the player, because you don't really give a fuck about the story, like, <laughs> the people, the characters. I don't think they're designed so that you give, like, a real... Like, you really give a fuck about it. I think that's Hydration. a good thing, isn't it, though? Yeah, it is. Right. Because it detracts from the, the point of the game. is clearly about building a character that can most efficiently mow down waves of things to farm legendaries hmm. by come the end. So, but they also yeah, did give out a reasonable number of legendaries as we played. Closer towards the end, for sure. Thank you for the water, Jarx. Okay, so yeah. Good is probably the, the best place to put it. I don't want to say it was great, but it was good. Um, yeah, definitely it wasn't great. Uh, let's say next one on. <laughs> Again, I, I, an end of the year, like last minute addition to our things was Breathage. Which we played for like. The fuck is a Breathage? Yeah. Oh, the Immortal Chicken Game. The Immortal game. Chicken Game, yeah. Oh, I feel, I feel like it's basically Subnautica Light. That's how I look at that game. Yeah, but. I'm a I'm a caveat that by saying that I felt that Breathage was not as good because we spent so much time just going back and forth, like achieving almost nothing. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Like progress is a lot more incremental. I will say it was a genuinely amusing game, which is yeah, hard these days. Like it's something I would like to probably retry at some point, just because yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it was just like the way in which we were playing or if we did something like necessarily wrong or uh, if it's just that part that like, okay, it's going to, you're going to struggle in the beginning to get these sort of resources. And then once you have enough of certain resources, then the game or the world opens up to you. I don't know. The same way Subnautica, you can only again, really go so deep without, you know, like equipment and stuff. But once you do, it's like the world yeah. you're hoisted. So I feel like it might be a case but like again, that. But again, that's fine because you're not reviewing it based on, on something logical or <laughs> or, or, or balanced. You're reviewing on how you lost, how it, what impression it left with you, and the impression it left with you was that it was a bit too grindy, or a bit too long in the tooth. Yeah, for to the achieve four hours, what you we to didn't achieve. really achieve very much. We never even got to the first objective, really. Okay, next one on we have grounded. I enjoyed grounded. <laughs> <laughs> you got to play it with. I'm all, starting. I'm starting to friends. realize I might just be an, like a genuine asshole. <laughs> No, don't. Did you not enjoy Grounded that much? I, again, I started off strong with me. I enjoyed it for a while, had a short lifespan. Okay, so we keep that in the okay section. Was it good or be okay or below average? I think it was okay. Definitely okay. We have a lot in the okay section. But a lot in the good section as well. There's not that many below average. A few things in bad. Golf it. Oh, I think it's good. Okay. Well, it's good. 
I think Gold Hood's fun. I mean, I know there's a lot of customizable, yeah. customizable maps and all that, which make it a lot of fun. So, and I know Teacup and Andrews are still playing it now, and I wouldn't mind playing it again with them at some point too. Neither would I, yeah. Okay, so the next one, I'm going to drop this. So let me know if you think this is accurate or not. Oh, Alex is asking, what is Grounded? Wait, what? Grounded is a cooperative uh, game in which you play a child who has been shrunk down. It's basically like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but it's Alex a survival that. game. <laughs> that movie. Okay, basically it's a, it's, it's a survival game where you, you play as a child who's been subjected to a... Uh, Subjected to a shrink ray, and you have to survive, like again in in an area where there's like hostile insects, like ants and spiders and that sort of thing. Oh, he knows what ground um, is. Does he mean golf? Oh, uh, golf. It's just like a like a mini golf simulator where you use your mouse to control the strength of the stroke. That is correct. And it was actually basically. Actually, yeah, golf. Yeah. I don't actually know what it would be like to try play golf without having a friend group. I feel like it would be impossible. Like, can you even? Yes, you must be able to. Be weird. No, no worries at all. Uh, that's perfectly fine. Golf would even... Yeah. Derek has it correct. That's literally all it is. There's nothing more to it than that. The next one I feel is... I don't think that this will be controversial. So I will be curious as to what your opinion of this is. Because for me, uh, this is a great. Which is Tabletop Simulator. Yeah, definitely. I feel like Tabletop Simulator just has, in terms of like value for money, every like yeah, like anything you can think of that is a card-based game, whether it's... and and it's 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 Ooh. it's hard to hate a medium, Ron, because that's what it is. It's mm. just like a medium. It's a platform. Correct. So your 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 enjoyment is subject to yeah, you know, as you turn off that damn table, <laughs> your 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 enjoyment is subject to what you decide you want to do and you only ever open it when you feel like playing a board game That's so correct. you know yeah, yeah i think it perfectly it perfectly serves its purpose it's, like it's when you want to play a board game there is no better like substitute for tabletop simulator i mean it's just yeah. the variety of things that you can do with it um it's it is as you say it's a platform to play everything else but the fact that you can just basically play anything i know that like i've read through comments of people talking about tabletop simulator before and they're like I could go out and buy a board game for like $40 or with Tabletop Simulator over the last year, I've played probably like $11,200 worth of, yeah, like, easily. Worth of board games. And it's like, when you consider when you like D&D alone and, and stuff, all those yeah. Sorts of things, it's like, board games aren't cheap nowadays. So, yeah, he's right. It's not just limited to board games either. Yeah. It's a lot of things. True. So, yeah, I think that it's appropriately there. Oh, the next one I'm going to, I want to say this is good still. Grim Dawn. We apparently just played Grim Dawn. I know, I know, but it's one of those things that it's like, if you had to ask me, would I want to play this? Like, I would want to play Grim Dawn still. We still have an expansion for that that I would like to try and get to one day. I, I know we played it a shit ton. I would allow it to be in the good section, yeah. <laughs> we will allow it. Also, yeah, Jarex is right. It you is... can pull out the D&D &D figures and all that for, for it. But yeah, it's, it's just... Yeah. yeah. So Grim Dawn, obviously, we've played Grim Dawn for surprisingly a, a very long time. Um, Grim Dawn is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. My ninth most played game of all time. Yeah. So, it says a lot. Yeah, I think it's a good game. I, mean, I enjoy that sort of game. Did you say Until Dawn? No, no, no. Grim Dawn, not Until Dawn. We never played uh, Until Dawn. I actually did try play Until Dawn a few years back. I was unsuccessful, sadly. Oh, shit. What? That's another one. Have you got that on the list? The one we played together, the, the Until Dawn 2 or 3 or whatever it was. The people in the forest. The what? In the forest? It's that one of those games like, from the people who made Until Dawn. Um... They, they were, there's a bunch of like teenagers in in the forest. The the doc and the doc pictures anthology one. Yes, yeah. We so never on. played that. We watched. We did. It. We watched it. We didn't play it. Oh, I thought you and I watched you. Never no, mind. No, 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 no. We watched that on like a YouTube together where we took bets uh, on who would live. Didn't you play House of Ashes? Okay. 
You are right, we did play this in Bashes. Yes! Uh, fucking thank you, Andrews. I was thinking, I was hoping I'm like, no one would remember I'm being, that. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking being <laughs> gaslighted, like, what the fuck is going on here? I was hoping no one would remember that. <laughs> it wasn't the jungle one, but it was, you played the... Yeah, until dawn the Middle East, scary. like, going into the... Oh, okay, I, uh, so, so I am wrong, I'm just an idiot, because we, we watched, uh, the one I, I, I interacted with Ron on was the jungle one, or like the, the, the woods at night one. Yeah, you're thinking of the... Uh... The one where everyone was really just like a figment of one guy's imagination by the end. Yes, that that's yeah, right. We watched that Spoilers, one. by the fucking way. <laughs> oh, that's kidding. the... Little Hope, eh? Hey? Yeah. Yes, that's Little it. Hope. I watched a stream of play that the other day, actually, for the first time. Rip, sorry about that. Did not see that ending coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, I've I'd, I'd seen the ending, so... It's one of many possible spoilery endings, I'm sure. It really isn't. One of the dudes straight up mercs himself. So yeah, but he. Oh, by the way, House of Ashes. Yeah, no, is this man. Sorry. Fucking straight up spoils. Fucking games. Anyway. You know what to expect coming by here now. We only spoiled because it's not worth playing. I've saved you six hours. You fucking asshole. <laughs> 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 we're like, we make a list, don't worry, it's entirely subjective. And you're like, but you're not, it's fucking worth it. It's not even on the list. <laughs> Little Hope is not exactly, on the list. Exactly, and you still spoiled it. it. <laughs> you didn't even play it and you still spoiled it. <laughs> not bad. Oh, okay, sake. let's move on before we find something else. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember if it's on this list. I've tried to intentionally leave off. Okay, so okay. next up we have Resident Evil 5. I honestly thought it was good. I enjoyed our playthrough of Resident Evil 5 quite a lot. I feel like you're lying to me, but I did too. It's a good game. I still believe it's still a good, good. co-op experience. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I don't think I can say anything wrong about it. I mean, the control scheme is wonky to get into it, but other than that, there was no glitches. The story went smoothly. Um, the gameplay is still fun. The treasure hunting is still good. The enemy variety is there. It's fun to see Wesker being an idiot. Doing like all <laughs> the weird campy shit. So, Chris. yeah, boulder punching for the win, I guess. It's good. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so next up is Shadow of Mordor, which I'm going to put that for my playthrough was below average. It was, it's one of those cases where you have something like the Ubisoft sandbox model implemented by Warner Brothers, where they're like, okay, we're going to put up a bunch of towers for you to climb. And now, rinse and repeat doing that sort of formulaic like thing that you need to do 20 different times. Where I could basically, there's like a progression sheet attached to the game, which was basically they say like, find 20 of these collectibles, find 20 of these like sigils, free 20 prisoner camps. And I think that was about it really. And those, what I've just described, there is no variation to those. It's just find things, free camps, and that's about it. So it's just like, okay. Those are like all your side objectives and stuff. So there's no point in doing any of them. They didn't give you anything um, other than like some experience, which you could get playing the main like missions. And with which if you didn't, if you just walked through the main missions, you would find that you've missed most of the game because the nemesis system doesn't get a chance to actually do much unless you have like, you have to go and do these boring-ass side things in order to actually, like, make mistakes in order for the game to learn or develop or create orcs that are actually, like, worth something. Like, it was bizarre. It was a below-average experience for me. Like, even my, like, my, like, final boss battle where they're like, ah, here is your, like, your nemesis, your actual nemesis orc throughout the game was someone I'd killed four times already and just kept coming back. So I was, just, like, a little bit, like, disappointed. So I was a little sad on that. Like, it was a bad enough experience that, like, when I bought the game and its sequel, like, because it was a bundle, I haven't played the sequel yet because I was so put off by the first experience. So I think that says a lot. Okay, next one on the list, we have Dead by Daylight. I don't know if you actually played Dead by Daylight with me last time. I did not. Which did pretty not. much sums up my opinions on the game. I feel like, weirdly enough, 
2020 was probably the better year for Dead by Daylight. I think I enjoyed it less last year. There were still some good moments, but there was there was definitely some point where I was just getting fucked. That was the whole reason why I'd even switched from doing Dead by Daylight like every <laughs> just Jarek's crashed here. Like, I think, yeah, the game needs a little bit of like balancing in some way right now. And I know that that's difficult to do, but like some of the changes have made it very difficult for me in particular to play the game. So yeah, in the bin with Dodo. Derek, have you played Dead by Daylight? I can't honestly remember. Also, just going to look now. So the next one on is we have Gary's mod. Something we can actually get Andrew's opinion on as well. I, both, I know oh, that both of you are going to be like, I yeah, so... Huh? I don't think you do. Well, I'm going to say good. So... I, I know that it'll be pulled averaged down slightly. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you, I, it, it's weird for me because I feel it's below average, but I would play it again. Weird situation. With the friend group, I would play it again. I mean, it's not something no, you definitely. can't play without a friend group, actually. Hey, but like, even still, it's it depends on like what we play and people's mood, like my mood as well. Alex has told me to stop moving. It gave me an aneurysm, that's all I'll say. This is very bad. <laughs> this, is, this is so sad. Okay, so... I guess that means it has to go into the okay section. <laughs> so <laughs> sad, so disappointed. <laughs> it's the five seconds. Well, the time is up then. Okay, so next up we have Fall Guys. I actually played that last year with Dan. So... I actually played it this year too. It's... Oof. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with it. I actually do like some of the additions that they've made. Because they're obviously always adding like more maps and more stuff. It can be fun from that regard. Um, definitely only something you need. You need friends with that. It's not something I could do for very long. So I'm gonna say it's okay. A part of me wants to go below average, but okay is like, I think it has to fall to okay. Next up, we have Quiplash. Uh, Quiplash, I think, is below average. It's like a shittier version of the Jackboxes, honestly. And I think one of the Jackboxes even includes it as well. But it was free, so we played it. So, no real complaints there, I think. Unless you have other opinions. We are almost at the end of this list. I think there's only two more. I didn't games. buy the game, and I'm happy I never bought the game. That's what I'll say. Okay, so next one on. Forum Online. <laughs> I played this game for a total of... Still scrolling. 38 minutes. So, what's my opinion of this game? I have no idea where I am, what I'm doing, who I am, what's happening, what on earth like is going on and I did not know what we are doing so it is a very like I guess it's okay because I know nothing about it so I haven't been disappointed yet <laughs> it got me to play there. it simultaneously with video so I think that says something about it Andrews says it's good Mark I don't think played it at all Is Mark even alive now? Yep, I am alive, I am. Okay, so I think we're at the last of the games that I had on the list um, before we go to the ones that were non-existent, which is Aliens, Mark. Fucking G tier. No, <laughs> I, I, I think, I think... You can see me shaking. It. I, I don't know, I wouldn't play it again. Wouldn't play it again, Ron, so... You think it was bad? Brilliant. Bad, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It's it it, it triggers me because boring. like it's 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 not like non-functional, but it's just boring. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a very strange case of, I feel like, they have the core gameplay loop down, but in order to have that 
down and like not like be broken they've dismantled literally everything else in the game that could have had value or saved it can't see the bad list Run away again hold on Maybe just adjust the filter on this quick. There we go, that should be able to cover it. There we go. You can kind of see bad. Yeah, so bad aliens, fire, stri fire strike elite. Yeah, so as I was saying, I feel like that core gameplay loop is fine and it's there, but it's like everything else where it's like, okay, let's get rid of decent AI mechanics, AI, like enemy variation. Um, let's get rid of like, you know, like voice voiceovers and stuff like that, or cutscenes and replace everything with basically like just text and like voiceover. And it's just like, okay. And yeah, but even then the story was nothing to write home about. Like, it, it's like, as you say, Outriders was one of those experiences where we got into it and we were just there for like, okay, let's run around, have fun. And because the character didn't give much of a shit, he was kind of in the same... Geez. Oh, damn jokes. Because the, what's the word for it? The character didn't give a shit. We kind of were in the same place or when we actually tried to figure stuff out, we were, we'd still not lost much. But with that, it's like, okay, we're here. We don't care. But they're like, okay, we're going to give you some information and stuff and you should be caring. And we're like, no, why should I care about this? Like, you know what I mean? There wasn't really much there. It was disappointing. The same way we did as well with Fallout. As much as Fallout was good, it's not like we were playing it for the story. We were just running and killing things and having fun. Um, I mean, there is still a story there. And as it progressed, it did start to get into it a bit more. But yeah, it's like mm, just a bad first impression for sure. Okay, so that brings up that would be the end of the tier list then. So these are the ones on the list which we didn't give a rating to. Overwatch is okay in my opinion. I still played with Dan. Uh, similar, similar to CS, really. Yeah. Of its yeah, very much. Ability. To that. So, Overwatch is okay. Arc, Arc bad. Arc bad. <laughs> Halo Infinite. Okay, in my opinion. Okay. You think it's okay? Yeah, I wouldn't call it good, personally. No, okay. I really wanted to like it. I think I realized I think that afterwards. Hindsight, I really it's... wanted. I really wanted it to be good, but it it really it's it's okay. It's not a bad game, but it really it, it, it actually it actually achieves a lot of what it wants to achieve, but it also doesn't achieve a lot of what it wants to achieve. So, I think yeah. it's surprising that for like what we'd seen when they showed it. I also thank you, Jarek, I did correct it. Yeah, Dino Arc. Um, from what we'd seen when they released like gameplay footage, and then they still had an extra year of development time. I don't see where it went too much other than like increasing graphical fidelity and stuff like that which is like okay i can get it in some ways but it's like if they released it at that point and the combat and the same was like even worse i can't even imagine it would have been so different yeah Versus... well it would have been, would have been a failure wasteland total failure. failure i thought wasteland 3 was good i was enjoying it and i would still like to continue playing that at some point it seemed like, if Divinity was a 10, that would be a 7, if that makes sense. It's like a similar vein. Well, like I was saying I think earlier, Wasteland 3 is good. Huh? huh? What? Wasteland 3 good, huh? What, did you not think it was good? I just... I don't know, we didn't play that much of it. But yeah, I mean, I've played more of it than you, but I'm we're pretty much where we are, where I was now. Okay. So we played about four hours. Yeah. Of it. Oh, fair enough. Didn't yeah. feel like it. Yeah, it'd be it interesting to pick like, up again. Really the last one is House of Ashes. Yeah, that one I got to put in the bad section just because it was a case of I, however far I got into House of Ashes, I turned it off, came back, and my save was gone. So that is not a good start. Or a story-driven game, like a heavily story-driven, like, choice-based game. It's like, I don't feel like sitting and playing through the same three hours I just did again, trying to, like, figure out what choices I did exactly the same. Oh. So that one is definitely on that side. 
trying to see what was said in the chat. I missed some there. You're going to play golf with your friends. Good luck. It should be fun. Hopefully we'll go better than CS. Okay, so that ends the tier list then, I guess. We have our definitive tier list of the year. So the great games in particular. Of the things we played, I guess the best game of 2020 was Tabletop Simulator. <laughs> or Hades. <laughs> I honestly think you should give it 80s, because it, it is not often a single-player game comes around that's that engaging and compelling. That's true. Yeah, I think this list is fairly accurate for feelings. Fairly. That's a nice cap. Okay, so let's see. So now on to the next part of this. We have... I have to do the random Pokemon generated giveaway. You can see here, I was actually generating them previously. I'm trying to figure out to give one to someone. So this is for the January one. Pablo is going to cry because I put Dead by Daylight in OK. <laughs> I mean, I know I met you guys through Dead by Daylight, but it didn't exactly, like, uh, like I enjoy your guys' company, but it's not necessarily that that's tied to the game, if that makes sense. Like, Dead by Daylight is definitely okay. Like, would I say good? It's like, not necessarily. It feels a lot more like games like, what else is in here? Like, Overwatch, which obviously wasn't in here, but, and like, CSGO. It's sort of something that you can do, or like, that you kind of get that feeling of, um, what's the word for it? Uh, like, there's like a feeling of an addiction in there somewhere, which is never the best thing, or not something you necessarily want. It's not that you're playing it because you enjoy it so much as you're playing it because it's something to do. Do I have the blight? Nah, I do not have blight. Okay, so now we've got to go through this list as well. So as far as I'm aware from the list, and I need to add in Alex as well, just because you obviously were part of the subscriber list as of today, Till January, so you count. Uh, we have nine people on this list. So, yeah, we're gonna basically just hit randomize, and whoever is the first name on this list is gonna get the uh, gonna get the Gen Three Pokemon for this month. But we're not gonna have like a full all-out tournament. It'll be a lot faster this time around. So yeah, everyone included in this list is basically VIPs and subs. So that's everyone right now. Jarex, Yetaplier, Pablo, Dan, Mark, Pikup, Andrews, Louis, Alex. Either we do it this way or we do it, we eliminate like one name at a time, which sounds like a worse idea. We're just going to go with the first name. So, here we go. So let's see who wins. Pablo won. <laughs> Seems it's Pablo's lucky day. <laughs> He'll be very happy. Okay, so now let's see what he gets. Pablo is getting himself a... He is getting a Feebas. <laughs> I think that's the first fish on the stream that we will have. Yes, he has acquired a fish. I love that, I love that XD fish. <laughs> Just all caps fish. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, XD fish. I think it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect from the perspective of no one wants us to play fishing games more than Pablo. So I think Pablo will be very proud that he is now the proud owner of a fish. So it's for all his efforts of making us fish all those times, Mark. Here you go. Your reward is fish. It's vengeance. vengeance. My reward is vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like the, the shittiest part of the game. It was like, he's like, ah, oh, it was 10 minutes of fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we did it in what? I've had, I've had to do it in Hades, I've had to do it in Far Cry. Um, what are the games? There's been a ton. Anything that we can fish in, we've had to fish in. Jarek's wants his Magikarp. I think you can buy Magikarp, can't you? Magikarp shouldn't be that expensive. No, it will be. Magikarp will be like 130,000 if I'm wrong. It depends. What list, what number is Magikarp on the list? Let's take a look quickly. Let's see, so... Pokemon Gen 1 Magic Carp Index Number. I just want to Google it quick. I'm curious. Uh, Magic Carp is 129. So that would be 128,000 points then, I think. 
think. Yes, it is the fish. So I will gift it to him. I want to see what it looks like now on the stream, though. Take a look quickly. I can turn myself into one very quick. Gift myself. What is it called? A e bass. E bass. E bass. There it is. So that is the fee bass. It is fish. <laughs> it pretty swims around. So I think that, yeah, that is the first fish on the string. Growing list. You said 128. Uh, I think it's not 128,000. Am I wrong? Not, yeah, it's, what is it? Not, it's like 100, was it 1,200? No, I'm being wrong still. 12,000. It's 12,800. Yeah, sorry. I, I was misthinking. I haven't seen the, the actual things in a long time. Also, yeah, just a reminder that we do currently still have the uh, the Gen 4 Pokemon are still available for the charity purposes, and they will, they'll be a permanent part of the stream, like, forever. So, like, for any... What was it? I think it was for any 2.5 down pound uh, donation you get like a random gen 4 pokemon which again would just basically just be from this list too let's see because this is honestly just how i pick them although that thing is gone i don't know where that pokemon generator is gone it disappears so quickly hmm. well either way it's fine for now yeah it is 2.5 Okay, so that kills this part. So now I'm just going to set it to away for a second, and then I'm going to be trying something called Deer Simulator for the rest of the night. So that'll be a fun experience. It's not strange. Well, uh, on that note, on that bombshell... <laughs> Mark's going to clock out. I will be retiring. I'll check you later, B. All Have right. a good stream. Cheers, dude. Yeah. Good night, Mac. So I'll be Bye, back. Mr. Andrews. User disconnected from your channel.